and peace with them that call on the Lord from a pure heart. Out of a pure heart. David understood that because he was careless. He backslid. He went back into sin. And he didn't say, well, whatever has happened, whatever has not happened, I am still a king anyhow. Other people may know about what I've done. What does that matter? I'm still a king anyhow. He knew he might be a king, but he will not be a vessel unto honor. Therefore, he went to pray. You cannot be purged fully, purified fully, sanctified wholly, sanctified entirely without this prayer, this kind of prayer. Look at this, Psalm 51. I'm reading here from verse 6. Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. It's not just the external life. It's not, you know, I don't steal. I don't drink. I don't do this. I don't do that. That's external. But now, your inward part, your very spirit, your very soul, your very heart, behold, God desires truth in the inward part and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom purge me I want to serve you purge me I want to be a vessel to honor purge me I want to be accepted before you purge me I want to get home to glory purge me purge me with Esau and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Isn't it enough to be as white as snow? That's salvation. That's salvation. Do your sins be as scarlet? And do they be as crimson? I will cleanse, I wash you. I'll make you as wool. I'll make you like snow. That means to salvation. It says, I want to go beyond salvation. I want to be as white as snow. Salvation. I want to go beyond and be whiter than snow. And it says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out all mine iniquities. Well, already you know he was saved before. But he backslid and now he's asking for salvation. But it's not stopping our salvation. It's asking also for sanctification. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Not just the joy of salvation. There's not a make-believe salvation. This is not, okay, I've got it, I've got it. Okay, I think I've got it. No, it's not my belief. Thy salvation, the one you give, the one I am sure is coming from you, grant me and give me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Look at verse 13. Then and only then, after I'm restored, my slider, we cannot just go out Courageously serving the Lord, courageously running the race. They have told us, reach this and reach this and reach that. Hold on, hold on. Vessel unto honor first. They have told us, everyone must preach the gospel. I am going out. I'll tell everybody, hold on, hold on. Get saved, get restored, get sanctified, and get purified. You want to be sure you are ready for heaven before you go to tell other people, let's go to heaven. If you are headed towards hell because of defilement and because of sin, all that seal of running up and down, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your life. It says, only then, when I am restored, only then, when you create in me a clean heart, oh God, only then will I tell transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 5. 
Isaiah chapter 6. What do you mean from verse 5? Then said I, Woe is me. The people who come to the retreat and they hear the words of God. The people who come to the retreat and they hear all these messages. And all they can do is evaluate the message. I like that message. I enjoy that message. I appreciate that message. Uh -uh. Those people, they don't have any spiritual insight. When Isaiah saw the glory of God, and he saw the angels crying, Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. He didn't just say, I like the appearance of those angels. And I see their beauty. And I see their glory. He saw the holiness of God. He saw the purity of God. He saw the glory of heaven. And he saw his shame. He saw his own defilement. He saw his own deficiency. You know, the people come to the retreat. And, uh, you know, every time we pray, all they want to do is clap their hands. It's like they're waiting for, in Jesus' name we pray. And then you hear clapping. You're not going to find that in the New Testament. Neither are you going to find that in the Old Testament. We're coming back to Bible days. We're coming back to what it was in the Bible. You will not check it up as Jesus prayed. Check it up as the apostles prayed. And we want to discourage this kind of levity and this kind of seriousness. The choir is singing, somebody wants to clap. The ministers are praying, somebody wants to clap. Everything we do, somebody wants to clap. Why are you not sober? And just think that I must be purged, I must be purified. Isaiah saw the glory of God and he said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. In verse 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it on my mouth. Why? Oh, look at verse 5. Woe is me, for I am unclean, because I'm a man of unclean lips. Unclean lips. I'm saved. How do you talk? I'm born again. What's the language of your mouth? What are the things that come out of your mouth? The ideas of the world, the language of the world, the proverbs of the world, and all the things you have picked up in the past life, and you're still saying them. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And so the angel came and took this life core and laid upon his mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. Thy iniquity is taken away. I seen purged after that purging, after that purification, after that experience of sanctification, verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. First salvation, first sanctification, first pardon second purity purifying of the heart the purifying of the soul after that purification after that holiness and sanctification who shall i say and who will go for us it says here am i send me when you find a minister that we're pleading with we're pushing we're dragging when did you come to the church 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and you are not a solar leader, and you are not a house fellowship leader, and you are not this, and you are not, come on, you must do something. And we push them, and push them, and push them. 
until they feel ashamed that we're talking to them every time and they're not responding you didn't check up their lives you didn't check up why is it there's no inner seal why is it there's no passion what is the thing holding them back there is something in their heart in their life leave them alone let them get ready for heaven first but you know when you have that fire in your soul when you have that zeal in your heart and the fire from the altar of god has touched you nobody will push you you will hear from the lord yourself whom shall i say who will go for us then you'll be able to say like isaiah here am i lord send me and then the lord sent him we need the sanctification we need the holiness we need the purifying of the heart we're looking at malachi and i'm reading from chapter 3 malachi chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 3 malachi chapter 3 verse 3 it says and he shall see it as a pure as a refiner and purifier of silver remember vessels of gold vessels of silver vessels unto honor it says he shall see it as a refiner as a purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi purify the sons of levi purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver why will he purge them why will he purify them why does he want to sanctify us why does he want to purify us look at the latter part of that verse 3 that they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness that we may offer to the lord an offering in righteousness then shall the offering of judah and jerusalem be present unto the lord acceptable unto the lord worthy in the sight of the lord honorable in the sight of the lord as in the days of old and as in the former years the purifying of our vessels the sanctifying of our vessels if we're going to offer to the lord that which is acceptable first corinthians chapter 5 in first corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 6 first corinthians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 6 it's talking about the poaching and the purifying before we can be used in the hands of the lord i'm sure you understand god is not looking for thousands and millions of people to work for him if he asks them he'll use them but it's not in a hurry to just drive anybody to the world you know somebody is saying that we only have a few workers here and these few workers are not enough and if you have been in the church for the past three years raise up your hand they raise up their hands come to this side and you've come you've, you've learned enough you know. you've come to bible study for three years you've been coming to sunday meeting for three years and you have been coming to thursday revival hour have you been coming for uh, power night yes how many years three years come on come to this side all of you we are going to divide you you go to the choir you go among the ushers you go to security you go to us fellowship you go here and then we write down their names uh -uh. we don't do it like that you're spoiling the work and maybe you yourself you're not qualified to be a leader if you're a leader of note a leader that is worth your salt you will understand that if a man poach himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work in first corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 your glory is not good know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole law purge out therefore the old leaven the old lifestyle the old behavior and the old defilement and the old evil put out therefore 
the old leaven that she may be a new law as ye are unleavened for evil Christ a Passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast not of the old leaven neither of the work neither with the leaven of malice wickedness and then he goes on to say but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth have you found out sometimes these two people say they are workers and then the pastor of their local church is sitting down with them for one hour two hours three hours the two sisters and they're working in the same section of the church then they're choir but you notice they never greet each other and then you call them and say sister so and so first of all that's not a sister that's madam that's lady so and so that's madam so and so we use the word brother too cheap too flippantly brother so and so a thief a backslider sister so and so having malice having hatred quarreling shouting and then we we'll say come we're children of god uh -uh, are we we're born again uh -uh, are we we're servants of the lord uh -uh, are we you are in the choir together and here you are you're not greeting each other now please settle and this is what she did this is what she did okay forgive now forget no I cannot forgive. Pastor, you must understand. It's very painful what she said. And the other one will reply and point the finger like this. You're afraid that she must even point the finger and strike the eyeball out. And that one also talks. And then the you know, so-called pastor will say, okay, okay, uh, we, our time is gone now. I'll see you another time. When you finish singing on Sunday, see me. Ah, there you are. There you are. That's, that's how you spoil the church. When you finish singing on Sunday, it should not be there. Because it says, if a man purge himself from all these, he'll be a vessel unto honor. And he'll be a man, he'll be a woman. That is sanctified and purified and fit for the master's use. That's why it says over here, Purge out the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamb, and let all that malice go, all that wickedness, let it go, and all the lying, let it go, before we can be really people that will serve the Lord in an acceptable manner. It takes grace to serve the Lord grace in salvation and grace in sanctification purity of heart and purity of life if we're going to serve the lord if you come that service important that service essential and that service very necessary for you then do what it takes watch yourself take all those things out of your life and say lord here is my life i lay my life on the altar and then the lord will use us it tells us in Hebrews. Hebrews, I'm reading here from chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Wherefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace.